Istanbul University Web TV. We have a valuable guest, Florian Talhofer. Mr. Talhofer is here, our uh, Faculty of Communication CTO. We have a great interview, I think. Uh, also, we have had a big organization as a Istanbul University with TRT, Turkish Radio and Television Institute Corporation. We have a big symposium. After that, uh, through the ninth international documentary awards yes let's start the first question is coming mr talhofer welcome to istanbul welcome to istanbul university thank you very much um, thank you for having me <laughs> we would you like to start the first question um, you are known uh, with the inter interactive documentary as a title how can you explain the story of interactive documentary film like I can explain it from my point of view or how it happened to me and uh, it, is, it started um, 1996 for me. I was a student at a university at an art school in Berlin um, and computers came in and uh, I was very curious to explore the possibilities of computers. I was actually uh, studying in a design department but soon I learned that I'm not so interested in design but more in storytelling so I try I used computers uh, for the purpose of storytelling and that's how it all started we can start in these years okay and the, uh, how can you describe its situation in this day in this age um, it has possibilities and maybe some negative views. Uh, how can you uh, describe the situation? I think the um, uh, computers have a lot of p new possibilities to, to think about the world, to make stories, to present those stories. So, I mean, every, okay, a, a camera is an instrument to do research on the world, to, to look at the world and get a better understanding. And then you have camera and you record the, the, the result on film and you create linear films. And this has a certain logic of how to put the world together and show it to other people, think about it. Computers work fundamentally different. There is no linear thing on, a, on the hard drive of a computer. It's not organized in one thing after the other. Like you can, um, you can access things based on relation to each other. And um, this leads to a new way of, of thinking. Today we, uh, we use computers very, most of the time to, to uh, make films in a very conventional way. In the, in the way that we learn from using films that were on a reel. So we don't make use of, of what computers really can do to help us get a better understanding, to make different stories. Okay, um, what do you think about the future of documentary? I would, I would think that in the future, like people will make more use of that. I mean, you can see the, the development, then it goes in that direction. So um, people will be able to understand that there are multiple realities, that there is not one reality, but like that the reality is in fact, like you can have multiple angles to look at that and there is not the truth out there uh, which can be claimed or, or taken hostage by uh, someone who, who uh, takes that for, for his uh, benefit. So it will be a more tolerant society in the future um, with a better understanding. So it will be a nicer world, I think. Um, but that's my, my take on it. So in a way, I think that sto storytelling is really that fundamental. It is the, the basis of everything. Like if you think, I, for, for a while I, I thought about what, what is money? So I was interested in to find out what is money and I talked to a couple of people that I um, know a lot about it, that are experts in the fields. And when you sit with them and you talk, then at one point it becomes clear that no one knows what money is. Money is fiction. Money is fiction and so many of those things around us are fiction. But like the, the stuff that is built with 
with the work of people, the houses that we see, the universities, that this is not fiction, this is real. So fiction was there in the beginning and then it led to reality. It shaped reality and again the storytelling or, or filmmaking is a tool to create fictions. So if we have a wider variety of tools, we, are, we have better tools to create what, what is around us. It seems uh, positive, I, I think. And the, uh, what about the Corsaco? Because we know you uh, by this software, Corsaco. Uh, uh, what is the uh, qualities of Corsaco? How can you uh, describe the story of Corsaco? Yeah, I mean, okay, like story of Corsaco, <laughs> the linear story, is that I basically was curious in, in using computers as a tool to tell stories. And that was a logical development in a way. So story, uh, Korsakov is a, is a simple principle to organize story in a different way, in a non-linear way. It seems complicated first to people that are not used to this way of thinking or to this, because it's, it's different, it's just different from, from the, the way stories are told usually. Um, but in fact, it's a very simple uh, principle. So it, 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 you have like scenes that are related to other scenes by rules. So you, you say, okay, I want uh, to organize the, the, the things based on its color. So like there's red and uh, yellow in every, every one of these things on the table. And then this is, uh, the, the, the film is in, it, in its, is self organizing in, the, in a way. We know, yes, everything is changing. The director is changing, the viewers are changing. Um, Corsaco, yes, provides some possibilities. Uh, what is the possibilities for a specific uh, qualities? What can you say about it? Uh, the director have a map, I think, in these films. Uh, what can you describe it as, as a summary, maybe, for the director and the viewer? In a way, I think that uh, directors and viewers are not changing so much. They're not changing so much because they, um, they all run on the same hardware. And this is like a 200,000 year old hardware. This is called the brain. And, and people perceive the world with it. Uh, in a way, I, I feel that like this hyperlinear way of, of storytelling that was used in film was an accident. So it is like... Um, like, no one talks like that, no one thinks like that. If you read a book, it's not as hyperlinear as film. You know, there, there are things one after the other, but you always have time between the sentences, between the words, to come up with your own thoughts. Like, this is, you could not tell stories the way they are told in a film before film was invented, where everything is timed up to like 1 25th of a second. Um, so, like now we have the, uh, and, and Korsakov basically is, is in a way going back to the roots, using filmic possibilities. So, film is super fascinated to, to, fascinating to humans because it's moving image and sound, but it doesn't have to be like hyperlinear. Like, you don't have to have it in, in, in uh, long chunks of, of a pre designed uh, piece that an author designed. So Korsakov also provides a lot of uh, freedom for the author um, because he can narrate out of the box, out of this format that, that, that is very rigid that uh, film has, film delivers. Mm -hmm. uh, we are talking about interactive documentary film, non-linear, um, uh, logically, but um, some of the people uh, do not know about it. Uh, what do you think about this issue? Because, uh, yes, we are talking, uh, we are searching, we are um, viewing, but the, um, how can we um, make a link between the people and this uh, films, interactive documentary films. Uh, how can they known by the lots of people? How can we provide it? Well, I think it, it needs time to to go out into the world and uh, let people hear about it. And uh, at the moment, there are um, most people are super interested in seeing exciting, uh, engaging films, Hollywood films. 
people were educated for, for 100 years to love this kind of films and they love it. But there is like a, a number of people that is not so happy with that. Um, they might not um, see the alternatives because they have never heard of Korsakov or interactive film. They are just a bit frustrated. Like their reaction is basically they don't watch films anymore. They don't watch television, they don't watch these kinds of, of, uh, of products. And this is a, a silent uh, uh, um, group because they are not like uh, noticed in, in, in viewer numbers, for example. Viewer numbers, by definition, count the number of viewers. They don't count the number of non-viewers. Like when, when I talk to people who work in television, for example, I always say, ah, do you still watch television? And then people say, well, um, I don't have time. I mean, yeah, sometimes, but like not really. And they say, ah, yeah, and uh, your friends, uh, uh, do they watch television? And more and more people stop watching television. I, I, don't, I don't even have a t television at home anymore. It's just, and, and, and recently I think they changed the system, uh, how television is broadcast. In, in Germany, so I actually don't know even how, how to turn on a television. It's, uh, yeah, it's gone, and most of my friends don't watch television. There's a, they, things go in, 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 in different ways. People still watch films, some don't. I, I, I watch less and less films. I watch a lot of stuff on YouTube, and this is not supposed to be like a, um, a story that is built like with a dramatic arch and whatever. These are very often um, discussions of, um, of philosophers that, uh, that talk for one and a half hours or two hours about like, very complicated topics. And, and very often I, I don't understand. Okay, like the, the, I, I watched a, um, uh, a conversation of, of the three philosophers and um, they did jokes. Like they, they, they basically told philosoph philosophers jokes. And I heard it, and they were laughing, and I, I didn't get the joke. I didn't get it. So I rewind, uh, the, I went back, I listened to it again, I didn't get it. I listened to it again, and then I got it. And then it was really a very funny, you know, a very funny joke, and I, I learned a lot. So this is a new way of, of uh, um, taking in information, taking in the, these things. This was made in a very boring way, uh, to, towards all the rules of, of filmmaking. And then I, I looked at the numbers of how many people watched that. And that was a, like a three hour long uh, discussion. It was 1.5 1. 1. million people watched that. So I'm not the only one that is crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to uh, hear about the uh, Planet Galata because some years ago when I saw it, I was very surprised and glad uh, what is the story of Planet Galata? Yeah, Planet Galata. Especially because you, you were here in Istanbul and uh, at the Galata Bridge. Uh, what is this story? <laughs> yeah, well, the, the story. There are so many, um, so many angles to the story. Um, but the, the, um, well, the, I was basically asked by a television station to um, make a film about. Uh, no, actually, I was first asked to make a Korsakov film for the television station. So I met someone uh, there. She was super fascinated with, 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 my, uh, the, with my work, with uh, Korsakov, and said, ah, oh, yeah, we should have that for Arte as well. And, uh, and I, was a bit, uh, I was a bit shy because I, I had never done like a, 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 such a big production. I, was not, I didn't know if I'm, I'm capable of that. Anyway, she convinced me. We met a couple of times. and. Uh, and they also said, uh, yeah, we have something for you. You should go to Istanbul and you should, should uh, be on a bridge for two months and uh, observe it and, uh, and make a film about make a Korsakov film about it. And that's very much the things that I like, like to, to go to a place that I, have, that I don't know and observe and, and reflect on it. This is fantastic. So I agreed to do that. And, um, and later on in the process, we found, found out that we also have to do, that I also have to do a linear film because it's a television station after all and they need something to be broadcasted on TV. Um, so I also had to do a linear film. So I made both. I made a Korsakov film and a linear film and that was a very interesting experience 
because I, I had thought a lot about like how linear films work, how, how linear film works, but I had never done one myself. And uh, then I, I was taught like how, how you do have to do a film like very quickly by professional uh, advisors. And it, it is crazy. It's crazy. It, like it's crazy to make a documentary film. And, and, and like after that experience, I would say there is not, not no, no such thing as a documentary film. It is all fairy tale. You have to bend the reality that you capture very much that it fits into the form of a, of a film, of a story that is, is told. And then the result is a fabrication. Korsakov is also not reality, of course. It's also like you take some stuff out, you do throw a lot of stuff away and and it's 90 minutes. You know, of course, the film is 90 minutes. The film was, was 90 minutes. And, but you have more freedom. You, are not, you, you don't have to tweak reality so much to fit into, the, into that form. Yeah, so that was... Uh, the story. <laughs> no, actually, that's, not, that's, that's one of the, of the stories. I mean, another, another crazy thing about mm -hmm. it was that we had to write a treatment about uh, the film on, on the project. And uh, and I hate I hated that like a lot because I mean I had never been to Istanbul before, so imagine that like I, I write a treatment about this bridge that I wrote, I read a little bit about but I have never seen, mm -hmm. and uh, and then you basically fabricate something complete fabrication it's it's the and then you you try to find the most obvious things of, of, the, of the place. I mean, this is a bridge where I, I think 120,000 people cross that bridge every day. So you can find all kinds of things there. And of course, you will also be able to find the fabrications that you made in the first place. I wanted to be blank and basically forget everything that I know about this place and to come to this place and, and, and observe it and then find the things that I find. And this might be a coincidence or, or whatever. But, um, but if I do it the other way around, uh, then I will fall into stereotypes. I will emphasize stereotypes all the time. And this is how television works very much. Journalists, they don't have time. They need to be effective. So they, they, they have a crew with them that costs a lot of money. And then they, they go to a place. And like a good journalist has in mind what the answers of the questions will be. The, the answers that she will get. And, 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 and so she, she asks the questions till they get, she gets the answers as she wants them and then like packs her stuff and goes away. And this is basically, so, so it is very, very likely that the image that is created is basically the image that the, the journalist in that case had before he went to the, to, to the location or to the place. So we, we fall into a trap of, of uh, self-assuring us all the time. And we are sure that you have um, new projects. What about the new projects? New films, new interactive documentaries? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always like, um, I don't want to talk about unlaid eggs, but um, I'm not sure if this expression exists in Turkey. But uh, yeah, there are, uh, there are actually, um, yeah, I, I mean, it, usually projects come to me. So I, I, I sit there and I wait and someone knocks at the door and then uh, uh, offers me to do whatever. So, so there's a, someone now in Australia that uh, contacted me and uh, wants to do an academic uh, project, but also like with, a, with making a Corsica film. And I, because I got more and more into the direction of thinking about films, I really like that a lot and uh, it looks like I will have the possibilities to work with some people that I really respect very much and um, yeah, so th this is a, a project and another project that I'm working on right now at the moment is actually a very old project. So in uh, uh, 10 years ago I traveled on a motorbike through the United States uh, and every afternoon at uh, 4 o'clock when the light was, uh, was best, I picked an American and did an interview to find out how Americans ticked, tick. And uh, that's historic material now, but because uh, of the election of Trump and uh, the people in the Midwest and how they think about America and the world really has a lot of influence in the world, this becomes very, uh, 
very fascinating material uh, again. So I'm, I'm basically putting that uh, online again because all the technology has changed and I'm working on that at the moment. Yes, the technology uh, is changing, yes, we know, but um, you have mentioned the improvements of the Corsaco. Uh, what about it? A little bit you can uh, describe it. Uh, the Corsaco needs it or only just only improvements uh, you will make? You will make. Yeah, there, there are actually, I, I have a big wish, wish list of what I would like to improve in, in, in uh, Korsakov, but these are basically different features or, or, or fe features in Korsakov. That I, I'm, I'm very happy about the, um, the principle, how it works. I wouldn't change the principle, but like, of course, I, uh, there, there are many things like with a graphical user interface that you have or with a software to make it easier for people to use the software, um, give them different possibilities, have a better documentation on, on how the software works. I mean, this, was, this are all things that I, uh, I want to do. Um, th this is tricky because like developing a software is actually really, um, it's expensive and uh, it, uh, it takes a lot of time. And uh, because I do everything, uh, uh, I mean, I have a programmer, but I, I do so, so many things on my own. Um, yeah, I, I, that, that is a bit, yeah, I, I would like to improve that. And the last question, uh, is it possible to make a co-production with uh, Istanbul University and you? Uh, we wish, uh, I would like to express that. Is it possible? Yeah. yeah, of course. I mean, it is possible. Like the the, the thing is, and like it needs time and it needs funding, uh, which is basically like equal. Uh, yeah, with, with with funding you can buy time. I would love to do that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And if we can it's achieve gone. it, it will be the first for Turkey. I think uh, as an interactive documentary, as a genre. And the, would you like to add something? Let's go, let's start, let's uh, start with it right now. <laughs> <laughs> it was great, it was really, it was f fantastic that you uh, invited me here and that I could come. Uh, thank you for listening to, to my ideas. I think it's sometimes a bit hard to understand maybe, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I appreciate it a lot and I was very happy about the, the reception that I received. Thank you very much, thank, thank you, you very, very much, much. Uh, Mr. Talhofer. And uh, we have come to our interviews and uh, thank you very much Mr. Talhofer and your information you have given us. Okay, see you 